So this Yim Yi question came from an old ACCN2 paper back in January 2011. But other than the fact that it used to be called a uh, profit and loss account, we now call it an income statement. Nothing much has changed. So it's quite a useful uh, practice question. The only thing that's really changed is you won't be getting 30 marks for something like this these days. It'd be more like 14 um, if it appears in section B. Um, so Yim Yi is preparing financial statements for her business um, and she's already worked out a gross profit for the year ended 31st of December 2010 of 49,767. So that means we don't have to start with sales. So don't if you get a question like this, don't waste time looking for sales and everything that goes into cost of sales. That's already been done. But you do need to bear in mind that if any of these um, pieces of additional information relate to anything within the trading section of the income statement, you are going to need to adjust that gross profit figure. OK, so we've got some other balances. We've got rent received. So that's going to be other income. We've got bad debts. We now call those irrecoverable debts, which is obviously a lot longer to write. Um, we've got operating expenses. We've got wages. We've got fixtures and fittings at cost. So those are non-current assets. We've also got a motor van at cost, so more non-current assets there, 18,000. And a provision for depreciation brought forward on the motor van of 11,520. So that would suggest to me we might need to do some reducing balance depreciation. We've got trade receivables, we used to call debtors, at the year end of 32,400. And a provision for doubtful debts brought forward on the 1st of January, 2010 of 869. Okay, so those are, are balances that are going to be useful for us in compiling the income statement, because that's what we've got to do. We've got to start with a gross profit, adjusting that if necessary, and then complete the entire income statement. Okay, so it tells us here that included in Yim Yi's closing inventory were goods which cost a thousand pounds. These have been damaged and will have to be destroyed. So what we need to do is remove a thousand pounds from the closing inventory. So we're going to reduce closing inventory by a thousand. Now, obviously, we're not doing the statement of financial position, so we don't need to worry about it there. But closing inventory would have been deducted from cost of sales when we came up with this gross profit figure. So cost of sales, if we reduce that deduction by a thousand pounds, cost of sales will go up and it means that gross profit will go down by a thousand pounds. OK, so we're going to reduce closing inventory which will have a knock-on effect of reducing gross profit. So reduction in inventory means reduction in profit and a reduction in the value of the assets. Okay, Yim Yi has taken goods for her own use from the business. The goods cost 857 and would have been sold for 1200. Well, we can ignore what they would have been sold for. It's this 857 that we're interested in. So goods for own use, we deduct from purchases and we add them to drawings. Now, if we deduct them from purchases, again, it's gonna have an impact on this gross profit figure. Any deduction in purchases is going to re result in a deduction to cost of sales. So if we reduce purchases, cost of sales goes down. And that means that gross profit will go up by £857. So we're going to add that on. OK. Yim Yi rents part of her business to another business and she's owed 460 in rent at the 31st of December 2010. So this is accrued income. So we add it to the income. So we've got rent received up here. So we're going to add 460. That's now going to become rent receivable, technically. Um, but the 460 pounds would be included as a current asset on the statement of financial position. Obviously, we're not asked to do that bit, but just for completeness. Um, number four included in the total for operating expenses is 389 paid for the year ended 31st of December 2011. OK, so that 389 is a prepayment. So we're going to need to deduct that from operating expenses. OK, and we've also got £5,000 paid for the purchase of fixtures. Well, that's obviously an error of principle that's occurred here. It's a non-current asset, so it shouldn't be in operating expenses. So we need to take £5,000 out of operating expenses. But what we need to remember to do is add it to the fixtures and fittings at cost, because that's going to increase the value of those when we come to work out depreciation, which I suspect we'll need to do um, in a minute. OK. So wages for the final week of December 2010 amounting to 355 had not been paid. So that's an accrual. We're going to need to add that to the expense. So if we find the wages expense up here, we're going to add the accrual of 355 there. And we would include that as a current liability on the statement of financial position. OK, uh, number six, Yim Yi sold the motor van on the 30th of April 2010. So this motor van here, which had um, a cost of 18,000, that was the original cost, and depreciation to date 
of 11,520 has been sold. So we need to find out what the network value is. So we just take the 18,000 and deduct the 11,520. Oh, my calculator's gone a bit faint. So the network value is 6,480 pounds. Okay, so she sold it. That was what it was brought forward. Um, she's received 4450, so that's the sale proceeds, but it said she'd purchased the van on the 1st of January 2008. Well, that was a while ago. It's her policy to depreciate the motor van using the reducing balance method at the rate of 40% per annum. A full year's depreciation is charged in the year of disposal. So we're going to have to do 40% depreciation on that. So 6480 times 40% is 2592 depreciation we're going to need to include that as an expense on the income statement but it means that if we take the 6480 and deduct the 2590 the new net book value is going to be 3888 well she sold it for 4450 so minus 4450 means that she's actually made a profit on disposal of 500 and 62. So that's also going to need to go into the um, income statement that will go in as other income. So as well as this rent received up here, we're going to have a, a profit on disposal and potentially a reduction in the provision for doubtful debts if that needs to go down. But we'll sort that out in a second. Um, fixtures and fittings are depreciated using the straight line method. So we're going to need to work out depreciation and include that in our income statement as well. So um, the fixtures and fittings at cost were 25,800. Plus we had that 5,000 that had been plonked into purchases by mistake. So we've got what there, 30,800. And we're doing 15% depreciation on that. So that's 4,620. Okay, so that's going to need to go into the income statement, as well as the 2592, both as expenses and then the 562 profit on disposal will be other income. And then the final piece of additional information is that it's Yim Yi's policy to maintain the provision for doubtful debts at 2.5% of trade receivables. Well, the trade receivables there are 32,400. We've not been told about any irrecoverable debts that we need to write off. So there's nothing we need to do with that figure other than multiply it by 2.5% and find out what the total provision the doubtful debts needs to be at the end of the year. So 2.5% is £810, but we've already got 869 brought forward, okay, from the previous year. So if we take that away, we've actually got to reduce the provision for doubtful debts by £59. So in the other income, we're going to have quite a lot here. We've got the rent received, we've got the profit on disposal of the non-current asset, We've also got a £59 reduction in the uh, provision for doubtful debts. OK, so if we pop all of that together, we've got I've, I've already made a start on this. So don't forget, whenever you need to do any sort of financial statements, the examiner expects you to write what it is. Um, so this is the income statement for Yim Yi for the year ended 31st of December 2010. Obviously, it's a statement of financial position. It will be as at. And don't go abbreviating this. Don't write 3, 1, 12, 10. Um, you need to write the date out in full that's the uh, the convention so if you remember we're starting with gross profit here so the original gross profit was a figure of 49,767 okay we're taking off a thousand for that inventory that was going to be destroyed and we're adding 857 for the goods for own use so the new gross profit figure is going to be 49,624 okay so we can start with that figure so let's pop that in here Gross profit, 49,624. And then we're going to add the other income. Now, if you remember, we've got three sources of other income. We've got the rent received. So that was up here, rent received, which is the 5460 plus the 460 that was owed at the end of the year. So 5920 for rent received. And then we've got the profit on disposal of the non-current asset, that's 562. And we've also got the reduction in the provision for doubtful debts. So we can pop that in there, reduction in decrease, whatever you prefer, provision for doubtful debts. I'm going to put DDs, don't confuse that with direct debits. 
And then we can add those figures together. We can add it to the original gross profit. So 49,624 plus the 5920 plus the 562. I'm really struggling with this calculator. I think it's been kept in the dark over the Christmas holiday. So it's, uh, it's gone on strike. So we've now got a figure there of 59,165 from which we can start to deduct our expenses. So if we go down the list here, we've got irrecoverable debts. I'm just going to deal with them in the order that they're given here. So irrecoverable debts, there were no changes to that. They'd already been taken off of um, the trade receivables figure. Um, you'd only take them off of trade receivables if it were given some additional information, but we weren't. They've already been dealt. The operating expenses, we've got 35476. We've got to take the 389 off there, which was the um, prepaid expense, and then take off the £5,000 error of principle. So that's going to give you 30087 then we've got the wages, and we had an accrual on the wages. So we've got 18,460 plus the 355, which is 18,815. And then we've got some depreciation on the van. So depreciation on the van is 2592. And we also had some depreciation down here, if you remember, on the fixtures and fittings. So that was four. Six two. I'm just going to write F and F in the interest of speed. So four six two zero there, and I think that's everything. I don't think there are any other expenses. Nothing else we need to do. So we can just top those up. Seven four zero three double zero eight seven one double eight one five two five nine two four six two eight six eight five four, and then if we take that away, we get a loss of six hundred. And 89, don't we? That's it. So loss for the year needs to go in brackets 689. Now, the reason I was hesitating there is I've just looked at this answer, I just glanced across um, and saw the original answer. There's a typo in the original answer. So anyone that's called up the, um, the mark scheme for this, just be aware of that. I've double checked and the total for the expenses is definitely 56,854. So the loss for the year 689, pop it in brackets just to um, make sure it's correctly labelled. And, uh, and that's the end of that question. Thank you very much for watching.